All right, so now we are going to discuss um, the calculation part. Uh. All right, so for distribution of sample mean, when the population is normally distributed. So maybe we, before I start, uh, maybe we, before I start this part, uh, generally, uh, maybe need to have a look for the summary here. Okay, so um, please wait for a moment. Okay, so maybe in somewhere of your notes, uh, please maybe try to um, draw this diagram in. Okay, so it is actually a summary for this whole part. Uh for this whole subtopic here, okay? All right, so you will see that for our cases, uh, for population, for population, generally there are four different types of population. Uh, the first type is normally distributed population, okay? And then the second type is when the population is continuous. The third type is population is discrete. And then the last type is when the population is poison or maybe binomial, okay? So for this subtopic here, we are focused on the first case uh, where the uh, population okay, is normally distributed. This is our first case that we are going to cover it now. Okay, all right. So you can see that when your population is normal distributed, okay, because population is just like your parent, okay? So if, let's say, your parent is normally distributed, therefore, the sample mean when you get the child from the population and uh, the sample mean should be also normal distributed. Uh, it follows, okay, the, the original distribution of the population. Okay, so if population is normally distributed, then of course the sample mean is also normally distributed. Then just now we learned already, if this is the population mean, then the sample mean should be the same, of the sample mean should be the same, which is also mu. So you see, the two values here are the same. All right, but if let's say you look at the variance, this is your population variance, and when you want to apply or maybe when you want to calculate the sample mean variance, then you are taking the population variance. This is the population variance, right? Divided by sample size. Okay, and then the n is sample size that uh, will be given usually in the question. Okay, so please take note that for uh, the population which is normally distributed now, to change the sample mean as a normal distributed also, you, there are some things that you need to know here. First, you need to know that n can be any size. The sample size can be large, can be small. Okay, so we are not looking at the sample size. Uh, no matter it is large, large or small, then generally the sample mean it is still normal distributed. Okay, because the population is normal. Uh, therefore, it follows what we have at, in the population. All right, so that's why it is uh, normally distributed also. And then for this particular case here, we actually do not apply CLD. So you still don't know what is central limit theorem, right? We are learning later. But for the first case here, we didn't apply CLT at all. Okay, so this is the summary for the first case that we are going to learn now. Okay, all right. So uh, if you go through with all the explanation here, okay, so that this is what they tell you. So first you can see that, okay, they say, okay, and if let's say population is normally distributed, this is the population mean, this is the population variance, then the sample mean, will be something like this. It is still normally distributed. The mean of the sample mean is still the same as population mean. Okay, the variance of the population, uh, sorry, the variance of the sample mean, you need to take population variance. This is population variance, right? So population variance divided by n. Okay, so no matter the n is big or small, generally this result is true. Okay, huh? all right. So here they actually show you some um, how to say some graph. Lah. So this graph, it is just for understanding. So let's say this is your population graph. It is normally distributed. So they try to take out the sample and they investigate the shape. Okay, so when they take out the sample and they try to investigate the shape, lah, so you can see, if let's say I take the sample size to the sample mean itself already look like a normal curve. Then this one is also the same when you're having the sample size of five. Okay, this is the graph, and then when you're having the sample size of 25, this is the graph. So from small value until larger value of n, right, the graph generally will still look like a normal graph. Just that the shape will be different only, but generally you look at the curve and everything, right, it is still look like a normal graph. Okay, all right, so the larger sample size, the more clustered they become. 
So you can see that when the N uh, become larger and larger, so this one becomes a bit still spread out. Then this one, it becomes higher already, I'm not so spread out anymore. And then this one, if you see, look at it, you will find that oh, it becomes very clustered. Okay? All right? Okay. Then now, when you know that the sample mean is normally distributed, therefore, when you want to calculate the probability, the formula is still the same and the step is still the same. First, you have to standardize it first. How to standardize it? The formula is Z. Okay, you want to standardize it becomes Z, right? So Z is equal to sample mean minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So how you get this formula? Okay, it is actually from the distribution of the sample mean because you know that the mean is this and then this is the variance, right? Okay, so last time you learned when you want to do the standardization, you minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So the mean here is this mean, then divided by standard deviation. So the standard deviation for sample mean is sigma over square root n. Therefore, you have to divide it by sigma over square root n. Okay, so the concept of standardizing, it is still the same like what you learned before. Okay, and after you standardize it, then you just use the idea or concept that you learned before lah, to find out the probability from the normal table. Okay, all right. So this is what we have. Lah. Okay, yeah. so again, uh, the calculation part is actually not hard, but you need to learn how to detect out the question first lah, to know that whether is it the sample mean question or not. Okay, so we will discuss a few examples here. And then after that, maybe you can try the rest yourself. Okay. So maybe you can try now. Okay. You can have a look for example. Four. Okay. So they are talking about um, the length of time people take to complete a certain type of puzzle are normally distributed. So you highlight the word normally distributed with the mean and also standard deviation. Full stop. So that means this particular sentence, they are talking about the population. Although they didn't, they didn't tell you about it, right? But you should know that this is actually a population. And the population is normally distributed. Okay, and then uh, the random variable x represents the time taken in minutes by random chosen people to solve the type of puzzle. Okay, the time taken by the random sample of five people. So now you see the word random sample. Plus, but please take note, huh? the random sample is not the keyword. It is not an important keyword. All right, so the random sample is not a keyword. Huh? Don't tell me, oh, I look at the random sample, so I thought that it is a sample mean question. No. All right, random sample can appear in many types of questions. All right, so this is not a keyword. So, but they just tell you that they take, uh, the time is taken by a random sample of five people. So this five is the sample size. And uh, noted, the mean time x bar is calculated for each sample. So again, this is the keyword, the mean time, or maybe the x bar here, tells you that this question belongs to a um, sample mean question. Okay, so first, state the distribution of sample mean, giving the values of every parameter. So now when you talk about the sample mean question here, right? So first, you need to know what is the distribution of the population. So very uh, obvious, they already tell you the distribution of the population is normally distributed. Therefore, the sample mean x bar is also normally distributed. And then what is the value for the mean of the sample mean? So the mean of the sample mean will be the same as the population mean, which is 48.8. And then what is the value for the variance of the sample mean? So to get the value of the sample mean, you need to get the variance of population. So 15.6 is standard deviation, right? So you want to change it become variance of population means 15.6 squared. So this is the variance of population. And then you need to divide it by n sample size because this is the sample mean punya variance. All right, so you take 15.6 square divided by 5, and by pressing calculator, you will get 46.672. Okay, so this is the mean for the sample mean. This is the variance for the sample mean. So how you get it? The mean for the sample mean is exactly the same as the population mean. The variance of the sample mean, you take the population variance, 
that means 15.6 square divided by the sample size. So you get the variance of the sample mean. Okay, so this step usually would, you will need to show it up when you want to do any kind of calculation in this kind of question. Okay, then now we go to part number two. So for part number two, they want you to find out the probability for sample mean smaller than 50. Okay, so to find the probability of sample mean smaller than 50. Okay, so what should I have? What do I do? What, what, what should I do? Okay, so from here, if you can see it clearly, then generally what you will see is like, again, because you know that the sample mean is normally distributed, therefore you have to change it become Z. Okay, so when you want to change it become Z, means you take the value minus the mean. So what is the mean? Minus 48.8 .8 divided by standard deviation. So what is the standard deviation? So divided by the standard deviation, so this one, square root 48.672. Okay, and then the rest of the step, you just follow like what you learned before. Okay, so press calculator, you will get z smaller than 0 0.172. And then from the normal distribution table, you will get the probability, which is 0 0.5683. Okay, or you can change it become three significant figure, which is five, six, eight. All right, can or not? So this is how we do it. Okay, so you'll see that actually the calculation part is not hard. So the first thing is you need to identify the sampling question first. That's the first thing. After you make sure you are sure that it is the sampling question. So try to find out the mean for the sample mean and also try to find the variance of the sample mean. Then when you want to do the probability part, you just minus the mean divided by standard deviation, follow all the rules exactly the same like what you learned before. So calculation part, to be honest, is very simple. Okay, all right. Then maybe you can continue from another, uh, for another question. Okay, so let's have, let us have a look for example five. Okay, so the sampling for normal distribution also like in in this question I just put a bracket for you to notify you, but in exam you have to figure it out yourself. All right, so read again. The height of a particular species of plant follow a normal distribution, okay, with the mean 21 and also the standard deviation square root 90. So a random sample of 10 plants is taken and the mean height calculated. So again, the keyword is mean height. Okay, then now they want you to find the probability that this sample mean, so another keyword here is sample mean. So all this keyword tells you that they are from the sample mean question. Okay, so the sample mean lies between 18 until 27. Okay, so again, because for the first sentence on top, uh, okay, they are talking about the population. Okay, so the population is normally distributed. Therefore, uh, your sample mean is also normally distributed. What is the mean? So the mean will be exactly the same as the population mean, which is 21. How about the variance of sample mean? The variance of sample mean have to take the population variance, which is 90, divided by the sample size. So what is the sample size here? 10 plants, so divided by 10, and it is equal to 9. Okay, so what is the probability that they want you to calculate out? They want to calculate the probability from 18 between the sample mean until 27. Okay? And then, again, okay, first you have to try to standardize it first. Huh? So how to standardize it? Okay, so you have 18, you have 27, right? So to standardize it, you need to minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So minus the mean divided by standard deviation. Okay, all right. Then after that, Please continue further, okay, by using all the concepts that you learned before and your answer for this question should be 0 0.8185 or it should be 0 0.819. If you want to write in 819, also can. All right, so this is not a hard question. I hope that you can do it yourself. Okay, Anna?
All right, so generally, again, as what I said, it is very simple like, as long as you know the example mean question. Okay, so for those who already have the idea, you can try example 6 and 7 yourself. Okay, you can pause the video first and then you try it. Okay, then for me, I will just continue to discuss it with you. Okay, so example 6. Okay, so again, I'm talking about the height of a new variety of sunflower can be modeled by keyword normally distributed with this mean and also the standard deviation for T. Okay, so a random sample of 50 sunflowers is taken and the mean height calculated. So again, you see this keyword mean height. So this tells you that it is actually uh, from the question belongs to the question of sample mean. So they want to find the probability that the sample mean, see the keyword again, the sample mean lies between 195 and also 205. Okay, so this particular question to me, I think is quite simple. Then you find out the probability, which is 0 0.6234. You try it on your own because it's very similar to the previous example. Okay, and after that, they said a total of 100 samples, each of 50 observations. Okay, you're having 100 samples. Each of 50 observations means one sample inside got 50 observations. So like part number one, this one is one sample but now they take 100 sample. how many of these would you expect the sample means to lies between 195 and 205? So for part number two, it's very easy like, to know how many sample with the sample mean lies between 195 and 205. You need to take the probability in the first, multiply it with 100. So very simple. So you can have 62.34. Uh, and then you can change it become um, 62. Because usually for sample, okay, we actually need to have the whole number. If let's say you write 62.3, I don't think that it is wrong. So, okay, so this is how we do it. Not hard, right? Not hard at all. Once you know the, the, the some basic idea or basic details, huh, then generally you can do the calculation yourself already. Okay, then next one. How about for example 7? Okay, so a large number of random sample of size n is taken from the distribution x where x is normally distributed. So again, this one actually tells you that it is a population distribution with normal. Okay, and the sample mean. Okay, highlight the word sample mean. It is, is a keyword. Okay, for each random sample is calculated. And then now they said, I give you this information and they want you to find out the value of n. Okay, so again, you know, the same thing. This whole question is still talking about the sample mean. Therefore, before I do any calculation, I need to write out the mean of sample mean first. So the mean of sample mean 74. And then for the variance of the sample mean, you take the variance of population divided by the sample size. But our problem now is I don't know this sample size. I want to find out now. Okay, so to find the sample size, again, the question will definitely give you a useful information. So the useful information is what? The sample mean more than 72, it is equal to 0 0.854. Okay, all right. So now you try to continue with the calculation. So if let's say X sample mean, you want to change it become Z, then you're having 72. Okay, so minus the mean. Minus the mean means minus the 74 divided by standard deviation. So the standard deviation will be 6 over square root N. Okay, and it is equal to 0 0.854. Okay, so now you have to actually apply the value in a reverse way, like the top, the, sorry, the normal table in a reverse way. So the method that I teach before is you need to draw a graph. Okay, so because this one is greater and then the area is big, therefore you should assume that your graph will look something like this. Okay, so try to find out the 0 0.854 from your table in a reverse way and the value that you get should be 1.055 and from this graph the, that you draw just now, you know that it should be a negative value because 0 is here, right? So this one should be a negative value. Therefore, the 1.055 should be negative. Okay, and then the value inside the Z should be equal to negative. 
1.055. Okay, so you equate the value of z equals to negative 1.055. Then if you continue from there, you should able to get the value of n, which is 10. Okay, okay. So this is how we do it. Hopefully you have the idea. So again, you need to learn, or maybe you can. You need to do some revision to how to learn how to actually use the normal table in a reverse way. All right. Okay. Then next one, example eight, the very last example for this part. Okay, so again, if you read through the question, you still see the word normal distribution with the mean and also with the standard deviation. So this particular sentence talks about population. Okay, and after that, they want to find the probability that the mean height, so again, highlight the word mean height. This is actually one of the keywords. Okay, tells you that it belongs to sample mean question. Uh, uh, of a random sample of four male students is less than 65. So I think... All this I want to give it for you to complete it. So this one should be 0 0.0228. Okay. And then for part number two, the probability that the mean weight, so again, the mean weight here tells you that it is a sample mean question of a random sample of N students is less than that uh, 73 is 0 0.9918. Find the value of N. So the N here should be 16. So the part number two is quite similar to Example 7. Okay, all right. So these two parts, I want you to try out on your own or fully. Okay, because the, the idea generally is that okay, very simple and very easy to understand. All right, so this is the very first case for our sample mean question. Now. Okay, so the population is normally distributed. Therefore, no matter the n, the sample size is big or small, the sample mean will be still normally distributed. Okay, so for next video, we are uh, going to cover the other cases uh, where your population is not normal one. Then what can we do? Or what? how should we deal with the, how can we solve the question? Right? Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.